Hi everyone and welcome to episode four of the Talk is Cheap show. The Talk is Cheap show is a show that looks at matters in football and matters relating to Arsenal, although not exclusively so. I've got my man with me, Big C in the house. Same Curtis, what are you saying, bro? Good, man. How you been? Good, yeah. Busy what have you week. been up to? Tell the people what um, you've been up to. We had a game for AFTVFC this week against um, DTFC. That was interesting. Um, Look out for that. Catch that, that out on um, Blood Brothers. And then um, made a few videos on my channel, Kurt Shaw TV. Um, so, yeah, it's been a busy week. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So before we get into things, there's just a couple of shout outs I want to make before we go any further. The first one is to Maro Itoji, who's a, a AFTV fan and an Arsenal fan. And I know he follows us. Big up, Maro. I just wanted to congratulate him on getting to the World Cup final yeah. on the rugby. They actually came up short. They lost a thrilling game to uh, South Africa in the final. But let's not forget the great things they did in getting to the final. They actually beat the All Blacks in the semi-final. Mm -hmm. Um, a performance a lot of people are saying was one of the best England put in, in in any game, so that's great. Secondly, Lewis Hamilton, More another sure. Arsenal fan, another person who follows AFTV actually. Yeah, yeah. And as we all know by now, he won his sixth world championship, one behind Michael Schumacher. So big up Lewis Hamilton for that. And I just wanted to send as well, I'm sure you agree with me, and all, everyone out there want to send a, a get well soon and to uh, Andre Gomez, yeah. who suffered a horrendous injury a lot of us saw what happened last terrible. week terrible terrible and i know you've played so yeah I've seen you've probably seen injuries. things like that it was shocking yeah uh, really bad accident um but nevertheless we hope he yeah, makes a full and speedy recovery so just to recap last week's show we got a cracking show coming up for you this week but we just want to recap on last week's show and we did a couple of polls and um some interesting results uh the first one we spoke about the top five black arsenal players didn't we yeah um, and pretty much most of you agreed with what me and Curtis had put forward. We suggested Thierry Henry, Ian Wright, although you could vary the order on that, Patrick Vieira, David Rowcastle, and now I know you had Sol Campbell and I had Kanu. Most of you pretty much agreed with that. But there were some honourable mentions, and I'll just read them out. Alex Song, Ashley Cole, Chris White got a few votes, Emmanuel Abue got a few, Lauren was quite popular, and Paul Davis. So thanks for that. Appreciate everyone uh, sending in their suggestions. We really do. Regarding uh, the captaincy, Granite Xhaka, and whether he should be stripped or not, an overwhelming 76% of you voted in favour of Granite Xhaka being stripped, which of course has now happened. Mm -hmm. so, um, so once again, thanks for all the votes we received. We received a lot of votes. Keep it coming. Uh, we want to try and make the show as interactive as we possibly can. So thank you. So we'll start off the show this week by having a brief review of Arsenal's two games since we was last on air. The first game was uh, Arsenal versus Wolves at home in the Premier League. Um, Curtis? Well, it was it was the same old story really, wasn't it? Take the lead, look like you're in control, then start defending and throw the lead away. It's a bit mm. of a recurring theme at the moment. I thought we started the game okay, it was a good goal. Um, but we just didn't build on it and we never looked like building on it. It's almost as if Emery, when we get a lead, he, he wants us to retreat and defend, but yeah. we, we just don't have the defence to do that. I mean, I was at that game and for the yeah. first 10, 15 minutes, Wolves came at us yeah. and um, they were absolutely the better team. Yeah, They are on the front foot and they really had us looking ropey. Mm. Um, and then we got back into it. We ended up getting a goal, and as he said, we lost the lead. And I thought towards the end there, we were definitely hanging, hanging on. on. We're lucky to get. I was point. shocked when I heard some people around by FTV saying that they thought that we were the better side. I no. thought Wolves were clearly the better no. side. They, they created the better pace. chances. Yeah, yeah. And we had trouble dealing with um, Traore. Traore. Yeah. And he gave Tierney a bit of a rough time. Yeah. And Tierney did improve. Yeah. With some help from the other guys uh, in the second half, but. I just it think tactically, a, again, the manager set us up in a strange way. He put Ozil in, but he didn't really play in the, in the 10 role where we wanted him. He no. was a lot deeper. You got Torreira bombing on again, yeah. which nobody seems to understand why that's happening. It's weird. I, just, I, just I mean, just on the Ozil thing, and, you know, I've been accused of being a bit of a Ozil hater in the past, but yeah. he had a good game. He I didn't did think, I mean, game. I thought some of the fans, again, were getting a bit carried away saying yeah. he had a great game and blow. He had a very good game, very steady game. It was yeah. good to see the reception he was getting from the yeah, fans. Yeah, he's a fan's favourite. Um, yeah. And I think Emery's sort of played himself into a position where he has to play him. 
yeah. um, because he's tried every alternative and it hasn't worked. Um, but again, I would have liked to have seen Pepe start. I wanted to yeah. see Lacazette, Aubameyang and Pepe with Ozil. I think a lot of people were disappointed that Pepe was yeah. on the bench. Yeah, I, mean, and didn't I, even I, come I know on. I personally was. I was disappointed. I mean, when I seen Saka come on, nothing against Saka. He's a decent he young seems player. To like Saka, this manager. But I just thought Pepe should have come on. Absolutely. You need yeah. a goal. You've got your star £70 million pound yeah. player on the bench. You don't bring him on. And what was that doing for his confidence? No, nah, doesn't do a lot I for him. I thought that was a, a strange one by the manager there. Uh, Not for the first time this season. Yeah, but. that's that's the manager. So moving on then to the um, the game which took place last night, Europa League game against Vitoria. I mean, yeah. um, I think possibly the most boring game <laughs> of the season. That one. Uh, it was a strange game. It was almost it was like a, a pre-season game. friendly. It was, wasn't it? Middle of the afternoon. I mean, I was watching it at work um, with the volume turned down. And the amount of empty seats in that stadium. Yeah, because probably half the locals were at work. <laughs> I saw in the second half the stadium got more busy, so it was strange. But again, we went there and I think we were outplayed again. Uh, yeah, no, we were. We were. They had yeah. more possession, more shots. And if we're being there. honest... They outplayed us in the first game. Yeah. It was yeah. only um, those two wonder strikes by Pepe. We're like um, set, set well, piece yeah. FC at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Corners, yeah. free kicks. That's the only way we seem to be scoring goals. Yeah, there's a lot of players who look to be off the mark. Is there? I was also disappointed that he never gave Lacazette more minutes. Yeah, it's strange to take him over there and bring him on yeah. for 20 minutes. And the fact Tierney and Pepe played the full game would suggest they're not going to play at Leicester yeah, which isn't that's disappointing uh, and I know you were because I spoke to you already about this but you were slightly disappointed with the manager's um, post-match comments weren't yeah, you? yeah it was just you know he's trying to be positive and sort of say you know we defended well um, the instructions were followed but you know you've got to, I would much rather he came out and said look we're having a difficult time right now we need the fans to back us we're going to try and turn it around that's that's the kind of talk I want to yeah. hear. From. Admit that things aren't going well. Don't yeah. turn around and say you're happy with what's going on, because yeah. none of the fans are happy, and the players yeah. don't look happy overall. To be yeah. honest, I think to be fair, I think the manager there is just trying to convince himself, if anything. Yeah, uh, I think at the moment the feeling is um, when, not if, with Emery. Well, when well. he sort of goes, not if he goes. It's not looking great. It's for not him. looking great. But let's hope he can turn it around. So yeah. those. Yeah. That's our brief recap on the last couple of games for us. So, for our first major topic of this week's show, uh, we're going to have a brief look at the captaincy situation. Um, it's taken Arsenal 10 days, but they finally made a decision yeah. and appointed Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as the permanent captain of Arsenal Football Club. So, Granit Xhaka has had been relieved of the role mm. and Aubameyang's taken over. Yeah. Personally, I think that's a good choice. Yeah. There are one or two others who could have been in the mix-up for it. Mm. Um, Lacazette, but he's not really been playing no. that much this season. Some people are suggesting Rob Holding mm. as a, maybe a future captain, Gwenduzi, Bellerin. But, you know, David Luiz, a few people have yeah. suggested him. But I think, on balance, Aubameyang for me yeah, a good um, captain. What do you personally, think? I think he should have been the captain from the start of the season. Yeah, um, I don't see a definite leader in this team. There's no one who stands out like uh, Vincent Company who should definitely be the captain. I know a lot of purists don't like strikers being captains, yeah. which I get. But I think when I look at the Arsenal team, I think Aubameyang leads this team in a different sort of way. He's the guy who scores the goals. He won the Golden Boot last year. Um, I believe he's Gabon's captain as well. He is, yeah. Um, he's an experienced player. And then when Xhaka was named captain, you saw that that comment from Abame. Yeah, I brother. heard about that. Yeah, I think he put like brother. an angry face yeah, emoji. Yeah, yeah. So that gave off the impression Abameyang really wanted the captaincy yeah. um, role. And to be honest, I think Abameyang he really represents his club in the right way. He I does. know when we signed him, people were saying, you know, is he a bit of a bad egg? But He's been very positive. He's been. Yes. He's the only player to me I can look at and say in this team at the moment <laughs> has consistently performed at the level right, we need yeah. him to. I mean, unlike Jacker, where you know a lot of people were questioning his merits to even be on the team, you'd yeah. have to say that certainly on current form, Aubameyang, he's got to be one of the first names on the team sheet. Probably the first. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that's beyond dispute. Yeah. Um, and like you said, he's an experienced player. Mm. Um, he's not a what I call a shouter. No, he's not vocal. But 
he does lead from the front in, in terms of what he does on the pitch. Yeah. So he leads by example. And I think mm. he galvanises players through. A bit like what Harry Kane does. Yeah. Harry Kane is not a shouter. No. Um, Shearer and guys like that, they weren't shouters. Henry as well. Yeah. Henry. Um, but um, they can be relied upon each week to, yeah. um, perform. to perform. So I think at the moment, with the managers having such a bad time, I think sometimes you need the players on the pitch to start making things happen. I think... The dressing room will really get behind Aubameyang. Yeah. It's a very popular as well the fans. As well the fans, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's pretty much loved by the fans. Isn't yeah, he? he, he's the see. he's the top guy really, isn't he? Along with Ozil, um, so I think mm. the fans will get behind him. I think the players will. Hopefully, it gives him a even stronger connection sure. with the club, especially with um, his future. People are questioning whether he'll sign. Well, that's what I was going to say. The, the only uh, slight negatives. Is the fact that you know Aubameyang still hasn't apparently signed a, a long-term like deal, yeah. um, so is it one of those situations that, that we've seen in the past at Arsenal yeah. where, in order to try and tempt the player to stay at the they club, the armband, the, the yeah, club has given him the armband. Um, That's gone wrong a number of and times. And, and in yeah, the past and it ends as up, well. yeah, you know, we've seen that with Van Persie, Van Persie Fabregas, Fabregas yeah. you know, even Henri, yeah. um, a little bit Pierre. of that was yeah. So I don't know, but on balance. Um, I think it's something positive. At the moment, we're in a bit we of a rub as a club. I think we need to grab onto that. We don't want to really keep going on about the Xhaka situation. Yeah, Let's look at it in a positive bit, way now. Aubameyang, I think, is the leader in this yeah. team. And I think he's something, somebody, he's a player that the, everybody, the players, the fans, the mm. club, can rally behind 100%. and um, introduce some positivity, yeah. some badly needed positivity. So, yeah, so that's that one. So... Uh, Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang, congratulations on the captaincy and I hope he does really well. I'm sure he will. Now for our second topic, which is going to be our main topic of the show today, um, and it concerns incidents that happened over the weekend. Um, so let me take it from the top. I was at the game, um, as we've already spoken about, it wasn't the greatest game. Mm. So I go to uh, where AFTV are filming after the game. And as usual, there's masses of people, yeah. 150, 200 people, maybe even more, all queuing up patiently, waiting to have their say or to watch what's going on. You were there, bumped into you, bumped into all the other mm. AFTV influencers and so forth. You know, everyone's chopping it up, saying what they're saying. But not for the first time this season, I happened to come across uh, a couple of what I call AFTV hecklers, which are basically guys that obviously got a problem with the channel. And what these people have done in recent weeks is to come down to where you guys are filming mm -hmm. and basically seek it to make themselves a nuisance and heckle and to make it clear that they're not happy with the club and they think that AFTV is embarrassing the club. And listen, hey, people have their right to not like what AFTV do. I fully get that. But it's always strikes me as a bit weird that if you've got so much against the channel, why you would come all the way down to where they're filming to heckle people. But anyway, so anyway, I actually got into it with a couple of guys who were heckling and I was saying, look, okay, if you don't like it, mate, you don't, you know, you said your piece, but yeah. you don't have to stand there and start being abusive towards other people. So in the end, they walked off and, you know, we carried on as normal and, you know, everyone was doing their thing. But then the very next day, I'm at home, watching TV and I happened to come across uh, a show called The Sunday Supplement on Sky Sports and on that program uh, there's, I don't know if you know, are you aware of yeah, the program? Before, yeah, they have yeah. a number of um, journalists. national journalists in there and they're talking about various issues in football and um, not surprisingly they got round to talking about the Granite Xhaka incident and the fallout from that. Um, so they were talking about that and then they were talking about the Arsenal fan base. Um, so my ears pricked up a little bit, and I now heard there's two journalists in between you, um, in particular. I think it's Jason Burke yeah, of the Telegraph, Telegraph and yeah. John Cross of the Daily Mirror, mm. and they're having a right go at AFTV, which you know I was quite taken aback by that. Although maybe I shouldn't be too surprised. Um, and they were going on um, making some very derogatory comments about AFTV, and I've, I actually took a note of it. So. I don't want to misquote these guys, so I had a look at it and I wrote it down, uh, me being me. And um, first up was Jason Burt, and he said, and I quote, AFTV are goading people into making extreme reactions after every game. 
which I thought was ridiculous, actually. Because, mm. um, for example, with the Jacker incident, to mm. a man, all of us utterly condemned 100%. what happened. I mean, I've gone to so many Arsenal games. I've been going to Arsenal for many, many years, and I'm sure you have as well. I have never, ever booed an Arsenal player. No, never. And I'm pretty sure you haven't, and most of the guys I know, anyway. Never booed. Even after games, I don't boo. No. Um, so, you know, that was totally out of order. So for him to suggest that we're doing that, I thought that was, um, that was a cheap shot, actually. Yeah, was, I thought yeah. that was, uh, it was also calculated and a bit cowardly mm. uh, for him to say that. And then John Cross, he was even more scathing. Um, and again, I've actually written down what he said here, and I'm going to read it back uh, because again I don't want to misquote these guys so John Cross let's let me take you through what he said um, he said and again this is verbatim fans I know in particular the older fans are really embarrassed by things things like Arsenal fan TV he then went on to say about Unai Emery because he accused the fans of making you know Emery stay really uncomfortable to say the least this is what he said about Unai Emery. Um, Emery is done. Emery was a wrong appointment in the first place. Emery is a weak manager. When you've lost the fans, you've lost the fans. Emery is never connected with the fans. What are Emery's tactics? Emery hasn't mastered the language and therefore doesn't communicate well with the media or the fans. Emery's team has no identity. Brendan Rodgers is a better manager than Unai Emery. Now, what struck me about that when I, you know, finished watching the show is that absolutely every one of those statements that he's made, mm -hmm. people on AFTV have said the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the difference between what he said and what the fan base have said? Okay. Um, okay. He may have articulated it slightly better. He may not yeah. have used some swear words or profanities. But in essence, isn't that the same it's thing? What the the, same most thing. of the fans are saying. And it just struck me as that this is really not on, you know, because, hey, AFTV do not claim to represent the fan base, but they are a reflection of the fan base. Mm. So those are the same opinions that John Cross has voiced there are the same opinions that's been voiced by the likes of yourself, DT Troops and a host of other people. So... I don't see what the problem is. Um, I think, I think the people. problem is um, with people like John Cross. Um, he's dominated Arsenal media for a long time. It's sort of, we've looked to him and the newspapers to find out the news. I think now, you look at the newspapers, when's the last time most of us bought a newspaper? I can't remember <laughs> the last time I bought one. The power is shifting from the newspapers into social media. AFTV at the end of the day has given people like myself and some of the others you mentioned, it's, it's given you a platform to have your voice heard. Yeah. Um, it's not negative, it's, it's just a purely, anybody can go there, if you've been to the game and you've got a general opinion, queue up and make yourself heard. It's nothing different to when you used to go down the pub after the game, yeah. you might criticise a player if he's had a bad game. Equally, you'll celebrate a player if he's played well. There's been many times I've been on AFTV when we've won a big game. And we're all singing yeah, and dancing outside yeah. the ground. People are hugging each other. It brings you together. It does. The, the problem is Arsenal at the moment are very inconsistent. And, um, but John Cross is such a hypocrite in my opinion. Because, I mean, the fact is, as you've seen there with them headlines, he's saying exactly he's the same things. He's saying exactly thing. the same things that the fans are saying. It's almost so as what if, is the difference? It's almost as if he's saying, look... He's uh, allowed to say it and you're not. Let me say it and not yeah. you, yeah. So, I mean... I mean, what I see with this is, uh, I think it's very much a, um, a battle of the old guard and the new yeah, guard. Yeah. Uh, th those guys, like you said, it's a very white, very middle-aged male establishment. And it's almost like they're trying to protect their necks, really, isn't it? Mm. Um, I mean, and John Cross has actually been on AFTV before, yes. hasn't he? So it's, that makes it even stranger that he's criticising when he sat down and, and spoke with the guys before. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't get it. Um, you see, the problem with people like John Cross and Jason Burt is that they come from a certain section of the media, but they don't have any connection with 
the younger fans or fans yeah. from a different demographic. Mm. And so I think they struggle to get it, really, don't they? Yeah. Um, you, they really do need to stop doubting the integrity of the fans and the people who go along and yeah. give interviews on AFTV. These guys are just as big, if not bigger, fans of the club than they are. Yeah. And um, they've got an opinion. And AFTV, like it or loathe it, they provide a platform in which people can express that opinion. Mm. It's as simple as that. And listen, listen, I get, don't get me wrong, Sometimes some of the language that's used, I know that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Because I've got a few friends that say to me, look, you know what, I respect what Robbie's doing, but I would never come on there because I think some of those guys go in a bit too heavy sometimes. Yeah. But that is the emotions you get from fans, especially when they've just been to a game. You know, they're going to vent a little bit. Yeah. You know, they're not in a controlled environment like a studio. No. You know, it's a bit raw. It's a bit unfiltered. So you're going to get... So I think that's why it works so well. I was just about yeah, to go and say that's lose, why it works. If you lose, you are angry. If you exactly. won, you're over the, you know, you're so happy. So I think the raw emotion is what makes it so authentic. Yeah, and and yes, I get it. Fans from other from fans from other clubs are going to look at it, and they might be laughing and yeah. so forth. And but you know, it goes with the territory. Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't understand what the problem and is. And the thing is, most of the big clubs in the Premier League now have got fan channels. Yeah. So, you know, he's not complaining about other clubs. Why is it he's just mentioning AFTV? But, you know, I, I, I see it as a positive thing. It's given Absolutely people is. a platform to further themselves in their lives and provide for their family, you know. And why should fans not have a platform? Absolutely. You know? Fans from all around the world can connect with it. And, and they do. It. And they do, yeah. So. I mean, listen, uh, I can remember, uh, because Robbie started it off long before I got involved with mm -hmm helping him out. And this was going back, what, five, six years? 2012. And I remember uh, for a couple of games when he'd first started doing it, I tagged along with him. And um, he literally used to have to beg people. To come on. He'd stand there, him and Tao, and they'd have their camera all set up. People would walk past and say, oh, do you mind um, coming on and comment on about it. the game? And he'd be yeah. like, eh? who's that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, thanks, mate, it's all right, yeah? Now moving on to this day, people there's about a couple hundred people yeah, waiting to have their say. Time, yeah. You know, the channel has gone from zero to over a million subscribers, so they've got to be doing something right. Yeah. You know, basically, as I said before, they're providing a platform in which fans who have felt previously ostracised from what's going on can have their say, mm. and people like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, not just fans of Arsenal, but fans from across the football diaspora. Yeah regularly comment and say that they love the show, they love the fan cams, they love what the positivity that this provides. So, you know, I've been with my brother on trains and in restaurants and people come up to him and they want selfies and they want to talk about what he's done. It's a force for good. Mm. It's inspiring, as you said, other yes. people to set up their own channels. Yeah. It's inspiring other people to get into social media networking and mm. so forth. I don't see the problem with it. Okay, you're gonna get your excesses, but then you get that with everything. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, with this whole extreme reaction stuff, is uh, John Cross and Jason Burt, are you gonna to apologize to Raheem Sterling yeah. and some of the black players who, are, who have gone on record as saying, because of some of the negative stuff that they have written, mm. Uh, people um, like them, yeah. and even if it wasn't them per se, people in the journalism profession have written about them. That's encouraged racist abuse on the terraces. Yeah. You know, they pick and choose when... So is that not provoking extreme reaction? Yeah. As, as you say, it's no, it's no different to what they're doing. I just think because they're in less control of what's happening now, and times have changed, it's evolved. Social media is dominating the newspapers now. I just think... They don't like it because it's uh, affecting them. But yeah, they certainly didn't defend Sterling when he was going through. Yeah, I mean, it's thing. amazing because like uh, these guys will have a pop up social media, mm. but then you get stations, commercial stations like Talksport. Yeah, um, you got Adrian a guy Durham. in there, Adrian Durham. The he used to have a segment on his show called Arsenal. The Daily Arsenal, Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, which right. was deliberately designed. And listen, fair play to him, it worked. Yeah, they were provoking Arsenal fans every day. Yeah. On his show, making all sorts of wild, outlandish statements. Yeah. Um, basically, with the end, the end view in mind was to get Arsenal fans to ring up and vent. Yeah. Um, all Robbie's doing is he's providing a platform 
for the fans after the game to come and have their say. People enjoy doing it. Yeah. They're not causing anyone any harm. No. Um, the stuff that happened with Xhaka is absolutely, not, in my view, nothing to do with AFTV. No. A lot of those same people that were booing Xhaka and those idiots that were sending him the online stuff, I yeah. bet you they don't even like AFTV. No. So, you know. No, everyone I spoke to on AFTV was certainly nothing to do with We that. absolutely condemn that, yeah. you know? So, yeah. But anyway, guys, let us know what you think. Do you think that AFTV is uh, entertaining, a force for good, or do you think it's embarrassing the fan base? Let us know. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. This next segment of the show is called our Ops of the Week. Now, this week, we've got a very tough game. This Saturday, it's against Leicester. And uh, I would say it's arguably Unai Emery's biggest game since he arrived at the club. Um, so, Curtis, tell us. Well, it could, uh, say, man? it could potentially be his last game for the club. <laughs> um, a lot of people are saying that. I think if we go there and um, take a bit of a beating, I think he could be gone during the international break. Yeah. Um, the disappointing thing for me was Pepe and Tierney playing last night makes me think them two won't play against Leicester. Um, Vardy always seems to do well against us. Yeah. And Leicester, they're in such good form at the moment. They're playing the kind of football we want to see Arsenal Yeah, play. Leicester are doing I mean, they're actually playing with a swagger yeah. at the moment. They're not just playing well, they're playing with a swagger. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be at home. It'll be, you know, big game, mm. uh, Saturday, early evening, live on Sky. Massive game, and um, yeah, they'll be massively up for it. I mean, I the went the crowd, they always get behind them as well. I went there last year and they beat us 3 0, but we, I think um, Maitland Niles got that. sent off. But yeah, that was know, the one where Madison proper snitched yeah, him up, they were, yeah, they were hugging afterwards, weren't yeah, they? You know, yeah. um, but yeah, it, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we went there and nicked a draw. Or yeah, I was, listen, you know? I was gonna say that a lot of times in football, we saw it earlier in the season with yeah. um, Man United and Liverpool. Um, where everyone was writing United off and it was going to be about how many Liverpool were going to score and yeah. how badly United were going to get beaten. But they actually scored first and they held on for a creditable draw. Mm. Now, listen, I think that we could... We got, listen, we got the players, haven't we? Yeah. It's not like we haven't got the personnel. Yeah. We got the players to go there and get a result. And I think that with everything that's happened, mm. it might actually galvanise the players to put in a really good performance. And I'll tell you what, we will see on Saturday whether those players are playing for it. Yeah. I think we really will be able to see. I mean, because a lot of those games that we've had recently, it could be argued that we were expected to win. Mm. Okay? Um, we've been at home and we've been expected to win. Even the Sheffield United one that we lost, yeah, we, should have we, really we, should, we won, would have been favourites going into mm. that game. But with this one, we're not. So I'm just wondering whether that... Changes the dynamic. Changes the dynamic slightly. I mean, it's so... When I think about the game, on one hand, we could easily lose that game 3 or 4 nil. Yeah. But on the other side, if we turn up, maybe we get a point or even nick it. But Can we keep a clean sheet? I can't see us going there and keeping <laughs> a clean sheet. I really can't. Which means that we need to score at least two to yeah. win. They, they play on the front foot so much. Um, you know, Vardy's just, you know, with all that history of us trying to sign him, he always seems like he really wants to score against us. Yeah. Um, He's got to set us up tactically right. If his tactics are off on that day, and as you said earlier to me, if they get an early goal, you know, it could be a real... Yeah, yeah. we were talking about this before, and I was saying to Curtis that my one worry with this game is if Leicester score early, um, the floodgates might open up open, a little bit. Yeah. Well, certainly, even if the floodgates don't open up, the confidence could, could, could yeah. drain. Yeah. But listen, I'm going to be positive. Go it's on. Aubameyang's first game as permanent captain. Um... Even though the performances have been a bit dull and a bit drab, we haven't actually lost uh, our previous two games. Yeah. So, you know, there's room for improvement there. And I'm thinking that with the mood at the club being as it is now, we need mm. something positive. And I'm thinking maybe the players will really rally around. rally around and put in a performance. So I'm going for a... I don't think it will be a one or I'm going for a 2-2. Two, 2 all two. Two draw. I'd take that. Uh, you take if that. we could get a well, what do you think with that? What do I think? <laughs> do you know what? Just based off the manager, mm. I can't see us going there and getting a win, honestly. Wow. I believe in the players. I've said this for a while. I think we've got the players. But this manager, in my opinion, <laughs> is finished. 
He's tried so many different tactics and formations and nothing seems to change the yeah. way we're attacking. Um, do you know what? I'll go for... I'll go for a one-all draw, yeah. but I'm not totally convinced. Yeah, you know, I'm clinging on to hope. Yeah. Uh, so we're both going for draws. We'll go for a draw. I'm going for two-two. I go for one-all. Curtis is going for one-all. Let us know what you think, and um, we'll see. It's going to be a tough game, but hey. Right. So that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed episode four of the Talk Is Cheap show. Uh, as I said before on previous shows, we want to make the show interactive. So please send us your comments, your messages. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know about what you feel about the subjects we talked about today. Well, Bamiyan being captain, what do you think of that? Do you support that? Um, would you have liked to see somebody else appointed as captain? If so, whom? Uh, the second major topic was the one we spoke about with AFTV. Do you consider AFTV to be an embarrassment to the fan base? Or do you think that we're a force for good and that we provide good entertainment? Let us know. And it only goes for me to say thanks to my boy, Curtis, man. Yeah, good to Respect. See you, yeah, man. See you soon. Yeah. What are you up to this weekend? Well, I think we're doing the live stream, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Don't forget, forget the live stream, the people. The game on Saturday. So, yeah, um, check us out. That's that, going to be a good That'll be eventful, show. isn't it? Yeah. That will be very that'll eventful. Very yeah. eventful. Hopefully. And let us know where the people can find you. Yeah, um, Curtis Shaw TV. That's my YouTube channel. I'm trying to build it up and um, get it up there. And obviously, Curtis Shaw 9 on the socials. So, yeah. Respect. Yes, Keep watching people, bless. Thank you very much.